I've helped hundreds of agencies and scaled my content agency to over $200,000 per month. And what we're gonna talk about today is one of the most important things that we can do as agency owners that want to scale without hating their content agency. And I was able to scale my agency to a point where I was finally able to take vacations and not be stressed and the company would actually grow. I would have a team run the business and I was able to hire A players at my agency to do this. So if this sounds like a topic for you and something that you desire, keep watching because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the four essential points that are necessary to do this. Really what I wanna talk about is how do we build a content agency around you? So my story is I used to be that guy where I was like, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna grow this agency. It's gonna be freaking amazing. And we did, we were growing, we were scaling. We were able to add a lot of clients. And what happened was juggling everything. I was literally staying up till 10 PM, scheduling social media posts when I was at a point in my business when I should not be doing. And what happened is I was on the verge of burning out. I was in present because I was thinking about all the things I had to do. And that caused me to literally burn out, lose a lot of relationships, literally be in what we call agency prison, where you're just feeling stuck and there's no real way out of it. We're gonna go over four problems and the solutions needed to actually build a business you love. The first thing that I see a lot is their offer sucks. So if you're watching this, if you're feeling like you're juggling everything, one of the things is, is your offer probably suck? What we see a lot is we see the people say, yes, I can do graphic design. Yes, I can do SEO. Yes, I can do website. And this was literally me. I would say yes, because I fear that this client, by me not saying yes to doing SEO or building a website, they're gonna completely shut down my business because I need to say yes to this because that's going to equate to business growth. And what happened to me was I was the bottleneck. If I'm saying yes to everything, that is no way to actually scale because everything is going to come through me as an expert. Likely if you're watching this in your content agency, you're probably really good at what you do. You just haven't been able to build a business and productize it to get to a point where you can remove yourself and remove yourself as a bottleneck. If you're saying yes to everything in a perfect world, like you have to create systems, processes, you got to do the marketing, the verbiage, you're going to have to do 10 times the amount of work to actually do it well. What it did for me from like an operational perspective, it was a nightmare. But what it also did was it freaking confused people. I didn't have a clear message to any customer and it was really just unclear on what we even freaking did. That is the first problem that I see. The second problem I see when it comes to the offer is so focused on simply providing an output. And when you get a client and you're so focused on, yeah, we'll do hundred videos, yeah, we'll do 30 videos, they see the outputs that you're doing for them. What happens is the client starts seeing themselves, is this working? What does success actually look like? I probably shouldn't keep doing this because like, I have no idea what this is doing. Or they look at the videos and be like, can we just do like five videos? And then it becomes a race to the bottom. And then you're over here justifying your price. Your clients are leaving you and you're unable to get your clients results because you're so focused on just an output. So what we need to focus on is we need to focus on outcomes. Another problem with the offer is their order takers. By being this, you're not seen as a marketer, you're seen as a glorified freelancer. The last point as it pertains to offer is going to be the deliverables. You're doing everything yourself. All the deliverables are weighing on your shoulders. You're doing everything and what's going to happen is you're going to run out of time. That's going to cap your income. That's going to cap your ability to scale. In addition to time, you're just going to be freaking stressed out all the time. Here is what we need to do. We need to realize that your customers have a problem and they need a solution. You need to get them from their current problem in their business to their solution. That is your sole focus. You need to define what are the steps that will get them from the problem that they're facing to their solution. That's something that you need to figure out. You need to be a marketer, not just a content creator. And you think about if I was in this client's business, what would I do to get me from problem to solution? Keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it. How we need to look at it when we're building the steps is we need to start looking at these steps as to who can I get to do this for me? This is foundational stuff. If you haven't done this, this is gonna be really helpful for you. And then what you need to look at your offer is you need to say, I could probably hire an editor to edit these videos. I could probably hire a videographer to do these videos. And then what you can do is then you begin to see your offer as a product where you can hire people to fulfill it. And then what you wanna do is you want to price as if you were going to hire from the jump and that's going to give you your cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is how much it costs them. And these are really good numbers that you foundationally should know inside of your business that you can do it. They cost you thousand dollars for easy numbers. What we want to do is we want to multiply this by three to five, and that's going to give you the cost to the client. Now, no longer are you needing to say yes to everything because you have a solution to the problem. You're no longer going to be an order taker. Instead, you have the authority. We're marketing the outcome that we can provide and they are coming to you. They're coming with the mindset that they're going to be able to get an outcome. And you have an offer that's focused on the outcomes and you have a price and a vision to finally get stuff off of your plate. We need to start here and we need to be disciplined with this. Number two, your system stuff. What I see a lot and what like what I did a lot early in my agency was I kept everything in my head. It just really led to frustration because I didn't have any systems. Nothing was a process and it was just all in my head. And it was not a, an effective way for me to grow and scale. We need to start foundationally with really good agency infrastructure. The image that I always like to look at, pit stop. And think about like their systems. They are probably so freaking clear on all of these systems and all of the processes and everything that everybody needs 
needs to do in order to get it done. Same thing with your business. We need the systems and processes for everybody to follow inside of your agency so that the business can grow. What we like to do, and I'm gonna go through a couple of things that you can start implementing immediately is we like to use Notion. The first thing that I would do is I would start to build out your agency operating system. So anybody that joins agency, you does get access to our agency operating system. We train them on it, all that sort of stuff. But your agency operating system is the foundation to actually building your systems. And I'm gonna highlight a couple parts of the agency operating system inside of Notion that will be paramount. Number one is your client operating system. This houses your clients, the invoices, the onboarding forms, their logos, the contact information, meeting notes, projects you're working on, NPS scores, all of the stuff that's gonna be necessary in order for you to have a hub that anybody can go to. Second thing is gonna be the fulfillment operating system. Stop text messaging, asking about updates on edits. We need to use a tool like Notion and start managing every single video inside of Notion so that we can track it and we can have a process that somebody can follow to get it from this is an idea to this is an actual video. It can be very challenging to do this when you're like running and gunning because this is admin work, but I would just recommend hiring a BA to help manage this for you and also just like start using it and just making it a habit. Next thing is SOP library. SOP stands for standard operating procedures. Basically, this is trainings for your team. Third way that you can build your agency around you is to get over the fact that you suck at delegating. There is a art to delegating and it's the most important freaking thing. You can't scale without people, especially in agency, like people run the business. What typically happens when people suck at delegating and it just keeps them in that trap is they hire somebody, they get frustrated and they start thinking to themselves, faster if I just do it. And then you fire them and then you're back on the treadmill. The reality is, is it's not the person that you hire's fault that they probably did a bad job probably your fault. The reason they probably didn't do well is you didn't set them up to do well. We're gonna start from the top. How do we find the right people? And then how do we actually set them up for success? First thing that we wanna do is we wanna create a job description. We call this job description 2.0. And each job description includes a role, a responsibility, and smart expectation. Multiple roles, multiple responsibilities, multiple smart expectations. And it's gonna take some time to do this. Then job posting. So when we're posting a job, like I look at that as like an ad that we're sending to hundreds and thousands of people that are going to see it. So we need to sell them in the job post. We gotta attract our ideal team member. We need to be really clear on who we want because that's going to attract who we're going to get. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have an intake form. We're going to create an intake form with screening questions. Then we post job posting with the intake form inside of the job postings to say, hey, if you want to be considered for this job, you need to fill out this intake form. We need to post this everywhere. What we're doing is we're funneling people there. So that way we get somebody who's bought in, excited, eager to grow. As we hire somebody, we get the right candidate using this formula. Then your job becomes an expectation setter. So I always say like a CEO is a chief expectation officer because people will only follow what's expected of them. Secondly is tool provider. You got to make sure they have the tools in order to actually hit and exceed those expectations. And that leads me to my last point, which is training. Jocko Willink always says there's no bad teams, only bad leaders. If they're not doing good, it's on you. We need to set expectations. We need to provide tools. We need to train them. What's on the other side of this is you will build A players. You will get stuff off of your plate. We want to get them so trained up that it becomes a no brainer that they begin to absolutely crush it for you. Some key roles that I see just to be helpful is like an assistant, Paramount editor, for sure. If you're doing any sort of video editing, you need to hire a video editor and then client success manager. Last thing to note is just like, don't be afraid to invest. If I can spend $1,500, $2,000 a month to get 40 hours a week back so I can use those 40 hours a week to then grow my business and work on needle moving activities, to me, that's the freaking best investment. And then also just make sure that expectations are set up before you actually hire. We don't want to hire somebody and then just kind of throw them in the deep end. The last reason is simply because you're doing everything, meaning you're doing everything for the client. What happens is we get a client and we're gonna do everything for them. And then as a result, when we get a new client, add some more time. When we get a new client, we need to hire more people. When we get a new client, we can only serve them if they're in our geolocation. So the solution, what we need to do is we need to actually become a consultant. When we talked about our problem to solution, we just need to find the steps to desired outcome. What we traditionally do is we say, okay, I'm gonna do everything for you. Instead, let's get in the mind frame of doing it with them. Here's what I mean by that. Let's just say you have an offer that and the steps to outcome are optimized strategy, shooting, editing, posting, funnel, and that gets them to the solution. That's what you're doing for them, which is great. This should complement what you do for them. For the optimizing, like, can't we just guide them on how they can optimize their profiles? For the strategy, can we create like a strategy doc, come up with ideas with them and make sure those ideas are validated and coach them on the ideas of what they should actually shoot? For the shooting, couldn't we just like teach them how to shoot and or do a virtual production so you don't have to fly somewhere or you don't have to attend shoots all the time? Editing, could you teach them how to hire editors? Could you hire editors for them or this is something maybe you just do for them same thing with posting could you teach them how to find a social media manager or again maybe this is part of the done with you that you do for them funnel can you teach them how to turn their instagram or social media into a money making tool or you teach them how to do it you can teach them how to delegate it or maybe this part this is part of it there's many different ways that we can arrive to the solution and not all the time is it you doing everything for them we need to productize the process to getting it to the outcome so you can't just guess on this sort of stuff you can actually productize consulting pretty well and typically it's probably going to
going to be what you're doing for them and then just kind of identifying what you can do with them. You want to define what you can teach versus what you do, what I just mentioned. You want to create the steps to outcome and then basically just like task that out. We need to do one-to-ones with them. So your job as a consultant in this in this realm is to guide them, is to give them the sequence of events, it's to hold them accountable, and it's to make sure that they're following the right sequence of events. And then you can create modules to help them get to the outcome. So eventually what will happen is you can then start to delegate their questions to modules, to video. A couple things to know, like this needs to be a bit more niche. Like this isn't gonna be a very general offer. You need to be pretty specific on who this helps because the documents, the trainings, all that sort of stuff will be niched. Don't teach what you don't know. Like if you're watching this and you've never done an offer before, you've never done anything like this, probably not the best to adapt to something like this. And again, like you should have proven done for you experience before doing 100% consulting because what you can do is you can just itemize the done for you consulting. And guys, if we can land this, if we can nail this, we will have a vision of how we can remove ourselves from the agency finally take vacations, work, grow our business around us, not be a glorified freelancer, should be a true CEO inside of our agency. And if you're watching this, if you're like, hey, Austin, like, can you help me with this? Can you just like help me with my offer systems, delegation consultant? Absolutely, if you click the link down below, I would be happy to connect with you and, and talk more about how we can help build an offer before you one-to-one, -one, give you the agency operating system, copy and paste training how to use it, uh, teach you how to delegate using our talent acquisition funnel, and then of course, scale it through client acquisition channels. So if that sounds like you, click the link below. If not, be sure to join our free school group. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this going forward and give me a thumbs up if you like the video thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you on the next one